I have studied World War II history, tactics, battles, fortifications all of my life. I was in the army, I lectured on German and Russian tactics. And I thought I knew everything in all of the important parts of that war. A war that permanently changed the world. So much new world changing technology was created then. And much of it in secret German facilities hiding underground and run by the SS. In this series, I'm trying to uncover the still classified and secret special programs run by the SS, separating fiction from facts by following the documents and the credible human sources, comparing it to what is actually on the ground. I'm in Lower Silesia with local historian Christoph. We are investigating the tunnels of the huge Riese complex. What they were made for, some of them were completed and ready for use. This was all known and briefed to Adolf Hitler and under the auspices of General Kamla. Uh, from uh, Albert's Pearl, that's when this object must be ready in the year uh, 46. So maybe in the year 46. Hitler will use atomic bombs. As we saw in the last episode, it is possible that these tunnels could have been used to assemble V2 rockets that would then be driven out of the tunnels, fired towards the Russians, and pulled back in under cover. However, I think there is much more to this given the infrastructure we also see above ground. In 1944, the V2 or even the Rheinboden was not new technology, even if you had the possibility of attaching a nuclear weapon to the top of it. And as we have seen in previous episodes, these have now been perfected to the point where they can be used as tactical weapons. However, in this complex that has been briefed by Albert Speer to Adolf Hitler and have mentioned in Kamla's documents to Dr. Brandt of how important for the war effort these tunnels are. We need to investigate these further and there's a very specific group of buildings and constructions above ground that may give us a clue. The storages for buildings materials. So all the tunnels are connected even if they're not connected today. Um, they are... the... uh -huh. Even if we have no access and we can't see, we can, we can hear the echo through the different tunnels. So they must have been interconnected. There's one thing we can agree on. There's more underground here than we know. The most interesting place I will show you. Storage. Storage. I can see that sand and, and gravel. Little and pipes, yeah, for. What, uh, you know why why here the, the, the piping pipes uh, for warming the materials in winter. So these were heating pipes. Steam. Mm, steam. Yeah, yeah. Steam. I knew he was going to say steam. steam. Just a little. Well, where do you get hot steam in the middle of nowhere on a mountaintop? Come from this place. Uh, in this place, on the end of this line, uh, was going some some train, small train, train, and the machine uh, was connected with this installation. It was really, really well thought out. Watch Having your head. Yeah, yeah. Yep, got them. Very interesting. That running cables. And we're obviously going down. I don't know if uh, is that a track or just as hollow as we're under the road. And the through access tunnel. Concrete making from cement and uh, materials they uh, was uh, here in, in, in the storages. 
So here's the cement was made, and there used to be a roof. Roof's gone. It is now convertible. And that leads, so that is a track leading all the way this, down. Uh, this track, this track was way to, to shaft and with the shaft uh, the beton uh, are going 50 meters down to underground. They were not just going to build... Okay, yeah, so the rock quarrying is definitely out because you don't need to pour cement into a rock quarry. Yep. So here is a tunnel straight down underneath here. So let's go. Mm -hmm. Which was of course covered up and... Uh, you remember, do you remember uh, the communication shaft in underground? That's that over That's there. Here. You will notice here I'm stepping over a building wall, or what remains of it. The size of the construction out here is becoming rather staggering. So this is the access tunnel. This is the air shaft, which is pretty damn big for an air shaft. A pretty damn wide hole too and then the cement would come down over there. So when we're down below, this is where the light came from. Originally a company was set up to build the Riese project. They did not move fast enough and this has took over. This is set up for speed and serious construction. And just for comparison, I want to remind you of what the air shaft tunnels looked like at the east wall complex that was completed. Ventilation uh, station. It's, it's actually this goes to the outside there. Oh. Now we will go uh, to officers' building, and I will show you a room for Hitler. Anton Dalmos site. That's here. This place was made for Hitler. Yeah, uh, here will be should be uh, head quartier for Hitler's. If a heavy nuclear strike was expected in '46, Hitler would be somewhere nobody knew, needed to hide underground, or yeah. here in a place nobody knew and not at the castle, because that's the first place people would look for him. Wolfschanze in this time cannot be used um, like a bunker for Hitler. Hitler was searching, would search some alternative. Yeah? Of course. Here, uh, are, here was really, really good alternative. Good alternative reasons. Far away, secure. Secured by the SS already. Yeah. That makes more sense than... Materials, energy... Um, deep underground... Water. water. It's a very large, very large... Reinforced. Reinforced. This is not just a house. Looking at... Half a meter at least thick on the walls, exterior walls, which makes it too thick for machinery, makes no sense. Of course you have the traditional tunnel works for maintenance shafts. It does have the feel more of a factory floor than Maybe offices, living. offices, quarters, um, we, we can see more of influence and uh, it should be more of, of uh, rooms. Yeah, it's only one of two buildings. They will be built here. Yeah, next 
uh, buildings will be will be built here next to the, 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 the first. That was planned but not built. So this uh, is exploiters uh, was searching, uh, searching uh, some treasures for. Of course, yeah. because that's where you hide Anything. them under a building. Nothing. No, Nothing. no, no. No. Okay. no, this is just the one of the plates, floor mm. plates that are missing. Meetings room. Yeah? yeah. Officers meetings room. Room. Uh, and, uh, office. and here will be built fireplace. But fireplace for both sides, yeah, for this. Oh yes. And s and then the second side. Do we have any plans or any inform? Where did the information come from? Uh, from Anton Dalmas. Anton Dalmas. We have got to find more about this young man. And here, it's. It is possible uh, here to, to, to the some room from Hitler. Uh, here, from here. Uh, yeah, now we, we, we can see only the plants, uh, woods, bushes, uh, yeah. But uh, in this time, was here mean? any 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 plants yeah from here you uh, should be see Schneekop, mm. the highest um, mountain in the Riza Gebirge Riza mountains Riza yeah complex Riza place uh, from the we, we, we can see Riza Schnee Koppe, biggest mountain. Mm -hmm. And Hitler did like Hitler with trees. Uh, was uh, artist. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it, it's uh, really mm, can it be a perfect picture for Hitler. Yeah. yeah. Perfect composition, nature. Well, I think <laughs> you spent I think you spent eight hundred and forty some days of the war at Wolfschanze. Yeah. Which is full of mosquitoes and generally a miserable place. So it's not like, I mean, you, there are dictators that start wars because they want everything and they want to live in luxury. He lived in a sh hellhole the entire war while everybody from Bormann to Himmler and Goering, they lived in luxury mansions and stole everything they could get while he's sitting in a concrete bunker somewhere. I have no reason to doubt why Speer and others would construct different facilities intended for Hitler and other high-ranking dignitaries uh, over the years planning them and so on. But for Hitler to be here and take part, I don't, I don't see it. I see this as a construction facility, a engineering facility, this is where work would take place. Canals for cabling. There's no underground driving access to this, which would make it hard for me to believe a person like Hitler himself would be here. But we will see when we get to Wolf's Lair how different 
the construction is of this building and the one we know that the high command met in i think Keitel had his own bunker at wolf's lair and i'm curious to see how this stacks up because the roof is significantly reinforced this is a meter a good meter thick with rebar however hitler was not going to be stuck in an above ground bunker with a roof that thin that is unthinkable you have a small door and a bigger door leading inside. Ideal for bringing in oversized equipment and tools and what have you. And expected this was to be, was supposed to have been the officer's quarters where it was rumored that Hitler were to have planned on staying or was to have been <laughs> I will go as far as to say this would have been the the two-story uh, the, the divided room small and big meeting room where Hitler is supposed to have met with his staff or were to meet with his staff with the dividing line going right down the center here where there's a slight break in the building. Again, the windows is not, they could be reinforced. You're gonna have a meeting room with access tunnels for cabling. So to try to give you some perspective, we went to Wolf's Lair to show you exactly what type of buildings that Hitler would live in and would have his meetings in. Every building here, the wolf's lair of these major shelters, the inner and outer shell have been separated by 50 centimeters of basalt to protect it from explosion from an air bomb. The, uh, this is even bigger, uh, 67 meters by 38, 67 meters by 38. So this was the original structure. And you see on top here, sitting there, is piece of an additional added piece of reinforcement. This is fascinating. So in case it was hit by an aerial bomb, the outer shell would uh, explode and be destroyed, but the inner would remain intact. None of these buildings that are built for meetings and dignitaries have any resemblance to what we saw in Lower Silesia, which is, I think is interesting, because if they built bunkers down there for Hitler and dignitaries, there would have been a resemblance, because they were built after this, and they would have been better at it, and they didn't. That proves my point. However, when taking a closer look at the second and third security zone buildings... Now, these buildings, incidentally, look a lot more like the industrial building we saw. So this was uh, Spears accommodation. This type of construction is much closer to what we saw in Lower Silesia and these buildings are typical for the ones in the Wolfsdale complex. So this would be the ministry representation building. Smaller than his accommodation. So this in my eyes is a, another part of the construction or research facility leading down to the tunnel under the road leading to the production facility and the transportation of cement with the experimental nuclear installation over this hill about 300 meters. Storage of material and high-ranking officers does not go well in the same place. But given that we know Hitler took a keen interest in this project, I'm certainly not discounting the possibility of him having been here and attended meetings here. And yes, I did say experimental nuclear facility.
is 40 meters long uh, and we know that the concrete goes down uh, 7 meters yeah uh, but don't know what is uh, the continuation of, of, of this uh, element but this was a power plant uh, maybe uh, or possibly uh, a nuclear testing facility of some kind yeah we can uh, we can uh, uh, see at the um, maybe reactor of uh, um, of place for for uh, working with 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 the um, uranium because as we saw on the east wall with the unfinished bunkers this is a completely different foundation with still strong still reinforced but not with the same rebar so so down there you see the separation between the between the sections so there's a section under this down there. Yeah. There's one more. How deep is the water? Um, maybe three meters. Yeah, more. Even for a power plant, you have a flat. For the most part, you have a flat bed for a power plant. I've never seen anything like this. And with the thick pipes leading between between the holes. Notice the walls appear to be shielded by rubber. Very compact. Any of it. I, I haven't seen anything that looks like this. This is the outer wall. It's time to visit the Mosquitoville again. <laughs> This is very, very, very heavy rebar. This is far thicker. This is an inch easy, several centimeters of rebar. And then these, which is crooked, which I don't understand why, but these are pipes, water pipes, ceramic water pipes leading somewhere. And this rebar goes all the way through, and I'm guessing there's if there's a deeper underground or at least in some sort of an access tunnel, perhaps. It's hard to tell, but this would have been the storage machine, something. This would not have been a place for daily work. This would have been a place where pipes and wires and things would go through, in and out of. But still, with two double access. About yes. Ah, some proof. Some proof. Makers. Maybe I'll stick another wall. And for ventilation. Now the, the, these holes leads into the tunnel next to us. These. 
Yeah. This is not outside. This is the tunnel next to us, which is why electrical and so on would go to the yeah, tunnel next yeah, to us. Yeah. You're right. This pipe would have been. This would have held some pressure. Otherwise, it there's no reason to kind of further the connection, and that would go straight into that one. Right? Yes. Those two connect. Yeah. They line up. maybe half a meter of dirt and stuff on here is what I'm guessing. But of course if we take all this dirt away the rebar would be exposed and here's a platform what clearly looks like a platform or something would sit. How did you get out of here and still not move the cobweb? <laughs> Similar room tucked in there? Yeah. And access this part, nobody knows why they are here. What's, what's the destination of uh, these pipes? Ventilation? Yeah, these, Maybe, uh, these are pipes, I thought they were pillars. Oh, when no. I looked at them from a distance, I thought they were pillars. They're, they're pipes. Pipes for the air, for the underground. Maybe, yeah, but, but That's anybody knows. Are there tunnels way under here? Yeah. So underneath here would it be a tunnel? Yeah, we can uh, check it with, with the navigation. Yeah. If there's an app that says tunnel finder, I'm just saying. I believe this is a lower part of the building a second or third basement and on top of this would be a much larger superstructure. So there's a tunnel, but not for people, since there's just this small. Uh. But there is a staircase down there. Uh -huh. We are here, and here are underground tunnel, tunnels. So the tunnels are underneath, they're straight underneath us, mm -hmm. or beneath us, but there will be 60 meters. Underneath us, deep in the mountain, are the large tunnels that are now flooded. And nobody quite knows how deep this building is or how they are connected. But here in the corner, of course you have these. Jeez. Damn. Damn down? This is the whole side of it that is way deeper than I had expected, leading something out of there. I mean, this is not insignificant. And yes, I have no idea if this bridge is going to hold me. No one yet knows how deep this building goes into the underground or if it extends all the way down into the now flooded tunnels. But certainly the air intake was higher up on the mountains and that was connected with the tunnels, so this would be too. Yeah, look at the dot. Huh. Well, here is possible the roof level. Should have been. Hmm? Come all the way up to here. The conversation about German nuclear weapons and heavy water production would eventually lead us here. So I had to bring in a friend of mine who's an engineer and he knows a thing or two about World War II mechanics. I think there's a fairly strong possibility we're looking at a heavy water production facility. And there's quite a few reasons for that. I had a word with a few other people who are familiar with World War II engineering and civil engineering in general, as well as myself, to confirm my suspicions. And there's two very, very key aspects to this with a, a tertiary aspect as well. The tertiary aspect is the presence of these two socking rate power plants nearby. It's very strategic as a choice to position this structure near these two power plants. It suggests you're going to need an awful lot of electricity. 
and as you noted in your survey there's all these tunnels and things that look like service ducts for power pipe work etc which suggests something is going on that's quite intensive here the two main ones have are those two big reservoirs underground reservoirs if it was a steel forging factory or some other world war ii era industry that's using an awful lot of water there's no reason to have enclosed large reservoirs you would either just have pipes a uh, big couple of big pipes coming in from somewhere elsewhere or you might have a big open air pond or something like that but nothing sealed if you're going to have sealed large reservoirs that suggests that there's something about the properties of the water itself that you want to have preserved, whether it be purity at one end or possibly deuterium content at the other. Um, so that's one big clue that it's something involving the water. And secondly, there's all those pipes. Now, if you look at the Telemark facility in Norway, you notice one of the things that distinguishes it from almost any other World War II infrastructure is this massive array of pipes coming down and then more pipes coming out because it's processing a lot of water and when you look at this facility on the one side you've got a whole row of very large very heavy duty pipes vert coming vertically up and out and on the other side although those pipes haven't survived as nearly as well there's a whole load of pipes or at least the holes for pipes suggesting again a flow in and a flow out so what have we got in total we've got a facility that is miles away from anywhere um, it's about as far as you can possibly get to from allied air attacks while still being secure against incoming russians from the other direction it's near a lot of electricity it seems to be associated with holding water and is very concerned with what is in that water it's, it's got a lot of service infrastructure ducting and everything inside it's built very heavily and it's got these multiple pipes in, multiple pipes out approach, which is very, very similar to what you see at Telemark, and actually very similar to what you see in a number of other heavy water processing facilities elsewhere, both at that time and more recently. So combine all those together with the timeline, which is this is being constructed around about the time the Germans would be looking to build a replacement heavy water production facility. And I think it's fairly reasonable to conclude that this very possibly could be some form of heavy water production facility maybe with some other ancillary uses in all those tunnels underground who knows but there's an awful lot like those pipes and such that would require an awful lot of very complex explanation as to why they're there if it isn't uh, a heavy water production facility but it'd be very interesting to find out uh, what, you, what you find out in future expeditions. And now the drag has opened the door to the nuclear research. Let's have a look. What do we have here? We have power, electricity, we have water, we have all the slave labor we could possibly want, and we have the SS with all their industrial connections. Now, granted, it does not look like Diebner's nuclear facility out at Komersdorf, and it doesn't exactly look like Heisenberg's either, so I think we could possibly rule out this being a nuclear reactor. However, when we remember that the SS, the German rocket scientists, they put their rockets into production before they were perfected, and we remember that Heisenberg and Diebner had a pretty good idea of how to make a nuclear reactor run, so there's no reason why not to think that the Germans would build one at this time the Germans would build and construct in anticipation of a perfected product. And we have to remember, according to Speer, 28,000 people worked here on the Riese project. That makes it a bigger project than anything else the Germans were working on throughout the war. More people worked here than the Bergkristall tunnels, and they are impressive. More people worked here than on the Jonstan tunnels, where they most lightly had infrastructure set up for nuclear development and research close to where Diebner and Schumann was working on a bomb. And then there's the other thing, the hundreds of thousands of square meters of missing tunnels and cement that we can't see or find any traces of out here in Lower Silesia. 
But when I look at the tunnels below, I am not seeing a rocket manufacturing plant. I'm not seeing a launch pad for technology that is, after all, years old and would not change the war from here. I'm certainly also not seeing a Hitler's headquarters underneath what is potentially a heavy water plant. Remember, there's uranium in the mines. And remember that von Aden said he installed cyclotrons here. Remember what Spornbeck said. Remember the Lothar project that we don't know but is affiliated with this. Remember the AEG memo about projects decisive for the war effort? There was a lot of facilities set up for some sort of research, development, manufacturing, underground with thousands and thousands of laborers, plenty of money, and all the top minds of German scientists involved, including the best funded and biggest German industry backing this up, all under the supportive umbrella of the SS and General Hans Kammler. And yet, when we walk these grounds, we don't see any of the signs of all of these resources being put into play here. The only thing I am certain of at this point is that everything we have been told, being a rocket facility, an underground bunker for Hitler, all of those things are not what we're looking at here. This is something very, very different, and we do not have the answers, just more questions. In the year 42, was the first experimental powered atomic power plant. Why here? Two or four, three years later, cannot be works normal, usual atomic power plant. It's normal. It, it's uh, at, at, at this project are working the same people that building the very high uh, technology in this time. And Christoph is absolutely correct. And case in point would be the giant V2 factory dome that they constructed out in France to construct and fire V2 rockets. This was planned when the V2 rocket was still in its infancy and fighting, breeding, teething problems. However, they already prepared for its mass production and launch. The nuclear program had existed in Germany from the 30s, and conceptually it was working. Diepnan, Heisenberg, and others had great ideas on how to do things, so why not prepare to put them into production? After Second World, uh, Russians bring all radioactive materials from here to Russia and built Russian first atomic bomb. Remember, Manfred von Aden also went to the Russians and worked on their first nuclear bomb project, and he did claim that he installed several cyclotrons in the Riese mines, so he was involved, and this ties together with the fact that the Russians evacuated everything that had to do with nuclear, both Diepner's reactor at Gatov and von Aden, and everything they found here to the same place in Russia after the war. Russians are searching for uranium uh, too in this place here, but not found it. Special transport uh, was organized uh, from Legnica to Russia with flight transports. Uh, and they make uh, this transport really quickly after the war, not wake, waiting for trains, transport, they need maybe one week time. Uh, they make it really, really quickly. In this area are a lot of, more of uh, a number of uh, uranium mines. Certainly it is now clear that something very serious and significant was being planned and constructed here. However, there was also something smaller that was related to General Kamla, an ME-262 plant nearby. So what we know is in 1943, the SS moved in to these little areas and these small towns, 
and the civilian population got very clear directive that they were not going to be allowed to move or leave their neighborhood. They were not going to have unrestricted access to their families and they were absolutely not to speak of what the SS and what the Germans were doing here. And chances are if they did, they would have been deported from here. This became a divided, locked down military area. Now we know they built parts for the ME262 here. There was also talks of setting up V2 rocket firing sites. As it so often is with small towns here, there's been a textile mill here in Wustigestorf owned by Meyer and Kaufmann Textilwerke. During the war, it was taken over and converted into a parts plant for the ME262. It was mostly manned by Russian and Polish POWs, but later Italians followed. Some of the old buildings are still here, the old factory buildings, but they've all been renovated. Um, it's hard to tell what's inside, but it is definite. There are no more parts of ME-262s or their machinery that all went to the Russians so they could build newer and better airplanes themselves. This bunker is, is uh, very good, safe. But this is clearly an air raid shelter yeah. for the workers of the factory, which again denotes this was a large permanent structure, as if we ever had any doubts of that. Take all the companies uh, with, with equipment uh, to Russia. Get out, yeah. And we look here, we have a shit ton of mosquitoes because this is okay, so this was channeling the water. Yes, it is. It's got the water running that way, so there's a reservoir for the factory. And that wall we recognize there was a big wall here shielding the complex passing the road. We're walking in an area that they used to be the factory used to be here. Above ground. The factory used to be above ground? Uh, yeah, above ground. Uh, it was uh, very big, uh, big buildings. Yes, it was. And uh, big area yeah, of, of, of uh, um, this uh, production. There was a foundation here where trees couldn't grow before or trees had been cleared. Clearly there was factory floors, there's large slabs of cement, remnants of a uh, barbed wire stands over there. Yeah. That's the, that's original from then? Original, yeah. What was that, a power plant? Um. And if you take a look around at what is now just a field, well the only remainder of what used to be is that big chimney, indicating how big a complex this used to be, and now there's nothing left. I see a foundation wall probably to the road leading down to the complex. Remember you remember the saying there's always a hole behind you. Well this is a tunnel. This is not a well. Where did the electricity for the factory come from? Because you would need a lot of electricity for this whole, I mean, this area must have, must um, have had its for, own... For this area, uh, I think power plants uh, are in, in, in Waldenburg. Uh, but second power plant are in uh, Melke, Ludwigsdorf. Yeah, we are going. It seems everything points to Ludwigsdorf, doesn't it? But these large slabs, we recognize with steel rebar, and here is a tunnel, or a bunker underneath. See, here's a walkway underneath here. There's a space you're standing on it. Either it's, it is too thin to be an air raid shelter or to be armed. Here, here's the, the, um, this is the, uh, 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 tar. The tar you put on top of concrete structures facing, mm -hmm. facing uh, weather. Uh, like you have on all bunkers on the west coast, you put you put them up, you put the tar, and you have only one piece of rebar connecting what is probably put together by slabs. So this did not have a, a strategic 
importance. This was part of a factory floor for an underground something, something but this was the top part. Maybe it's some technical cover. Yeah, this is, it, was not, it was not expecting to be bombed or, or attacked because it's not thick enough. But the fact that it's here and there's something underneath because this is clearly a roof. However, after returning to the office, I found out that the whole underground underneath here is littered with tunnels that are both built of masonry and cement and reinforced, typical German style. Not big enough to build planes into, but this is what Kamala did, move things underground. And in the original factory plans, I don't see these tunnels. However, I did find that in 1922, it had its own power plant designed by Erik Mendelssohn. Just as I suspected, it would have a power plant here, feeding right into what the Germans would look for when setting up shop. This complex where they built the ME-262s was destroyed. The buildings were torn down only 10 years ago. That's why the nature is so young. 10 years ago, there was so much more evidence here. Now you have trenches, foundations of building, but look at how fast nature has reclaimed this area. It is so important to discover what happened here and everywhere. And when buildings are destroyed, it is so much harder. In the next episode, we are going to Pienemünde. We're going to look at what the Germans actually did do, what they were testing and working with. And true to what you expect from me, we're not going to spend any time in the museum. We are going into the field and looking at the bits and pieces and a very special gentleman who has a very special off-site museum where he has actual parts of the German rocket and missile program. We're going to have a little talk with him and take a look at what was really there. Stay tuned.